when the attendance form opens, it opens default to, to the, this year and month. For demonstration purposes, we're going to examine records from last year, specifically the seniors record. The log shows underneath what has occurred with the common eight with this within this year, in 2009, November seniors program. Attendance was open on this date by this person. It was invoiced already, opened, and invoiced. What this shows us is this is basically this demonstration has been performed a few times. Typically, you see open attendance and then you get invoiced by the administrator and it would be closed. But for today's purposes, we have some test data in here. It shows a little bit the worst case scenario where it's been where a month of attendance has already been built and then we had to go make some adjustments. So we're going to go ahead and open that that attendance record. And we get a little bit of a warning that says it alerts us and says, by the way, the program seniors was already invoiced for the November 2009. You may need to resubmit the invoice if we alter the records, any of the records. We're going to click the OK button. As the system is gathering all the clients who have been assigned a service with the program senior and calculates all the units from the funding screen and subtracts the units already consumed in any previous months, if any, to give us the total units available for each client and for every service under the program senior. Now that the attendance screen is open, let's take a moment to look it over. We'll scroll down to the list, to, to the entry I just created and see the 12 units and add 12 units to the thousand that I have granted to me. So here's my record. I have a thousand available. I, oh, I didn't get services on Saturday. I got it on this day. So we're going to put in a thousand and click the record selector to save this record. And then we'll go ahead and close the attendance form. And the attendance menu. Thus far, we've covered admittance, assessment, program placement, grant funding, and attendance. Next, we're going to work, we're going to look at the financial reporting. I'm going to skip for now the, some of the reports and jump to the most important reports, and that's the monthly invoice report. It's under the administration screen because only administrators can create that invoice for the month. So we're going to open up the administration menu, click on the billing menu, type in the year and month that we want to bill for the program, and here it also shows a log of what's been occurring for this year, month, and, and program. And we're going to generate an internal uh, internal billing report. So it happens very quickly. As you can see on this report, this report lists all the clients who have consumed services for the program seniors during the month of November. Billing report lists total dollar amounts accrued in order of the program non-transportation, transportation, and then by service, and then lists all individual clients and the total number of units they consumed for the service, the tier, the rate, and the bill, bill, billable, non-billable. Let's go to my entry, which I believe is on page two. Just page down, page down. Now there I am. There are 12 units at a rate of $8.96 for a total of uh, 
107 and 52 cents, and those are all available, meaning that we have funding for them. So that's the bill and report. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the funding that we added and see what that does to the report. I go back into the adult, pull up my name, go to funding, move those units. Pretend this is so like I this is mimicking if you've got a client that hasn't yet received funding but he's already in services. And if we now go back to the attendance screen and look at his record, we'll see that that I will end up having a negative balance. Scroll down, scroll down. Here I am. And I actually have negative 12. Because I had 12 units and I don't have any funding. Knowing a client's funded balance in real time helps alert staff quickly so that they can take appropriate action. Now let's look how the reporting can find clients with negative or close to negative balances. Let's look for clients that have negative balance. So we'll click the down arrow, click negative, and view the clients. I'll make this report a little bigger so you can see it. And we'll see, here I am, minus 12, the rate, and the total. Now if we wanted to see clients that were getting close to a negative balance, but not maybe have not gone yet to negative, we can select the less than 400 units and we'll get a little larger list. I'm still on here, of course, because I have minus 12, but now we'll see we even have a few Jane, Jane Doe's and John Smith's that have um, positive balances, but not too many units left, maybe, you know, maybe less than a month's worth left. So they should. So this uh, this list would alert administrators that they should be submitting these individuals for additional funding. Now, if we look at the if we submit the monthly billing report, see how a, a client with negative balance shows up there. Again, only administrators could do that. Go to the billing menu. 2009, November, senior we generate, we'll see that here I am here at my 12 units. Uh, Non-billable is the entire amount. Billable is zero. Total is 107. Uh, it could have been that I ran out of funding or the, you know, the prior month. Um, it can be that I only I had a few, some of the units, I may have uh, five units funded and we would have actu actually had some bill, very few billable, five units worth, and then the other seven units would be non-billable. I'm sure you might have many questions at this point. Please go ahead and, and send me your questions and, and contact information and we can arrange for a live demonstration.